Hi everyone, I'm Bodine Victoria and this is my pot. I want to welcome you to my kitchen and of course to my YouTube channel where you can find all things Bahamian from culture to music to food and of course my interpretation of them simply because Bahamian music, Bahamian culture is amazing and I'm happy to be able to share it with you especially if you are far away from home or if you're looking for a taste of the islands wherever it is that you are. I got you. That's straight. Today, we are going to be making something that everybody likes to eat, but nobody really, really likes to have to cook, which I guess is probably why brunch is so much more popular now. You can have all of the food, all of the fun, and none of the smokiness. Yes, I am talking about making stew. It's just simple. You brown the flour in one way or the other, and then you add the broth, and you add whatever other ingredients you have to your broth. However, the process of browning the flour to make this stew is what many people shy away from. I know of many, many kitchens that have been smokied on a Sunday morning or on a Saturday morning simply because somebody took their eye off of their toasted flour for a couple of minutes and it singed or it burned and you gotta open the screens and the windows and stuff like that because you're, you're smoking yourself out. I'm also guilty, okay? I, I wanna tell my story. I'm going to be walking you through the process of making your very own stew without having any of that smoky business going on. The key is don't take your eye off your flour while it is toasting. We're going to be making stew grouper today. I love grouper fish. Fish broth. Now I got the suggestion to make the fish broth from Chef Simeon Hall, Chef Simeon Brentford Hall. He is currently in Hawaii and he is born, bred, and gadded Bahamian. What you do is you simply take those fish bones, you add water to them, some allspice, some bay leaves, some celery leaves, um, onion, maybe some garlic and thyme, and you put them in a pot and you let that boil and simmer and then you strain it. That way as my boyfriend calls them sauce balls. You don't have the allspice or the sauce balls inside your stew, but you have all of the flavor of it and it enhances the flavor much like using, let's say a bouillon cube. So you definitely want to use fish broth. If you don't have fish broth, water is just fine. You're going to need three quarters of a cup of flour. And then I'm also going to ask you to get maybe about a pat or a tablespoon of butter. I'm going to tell you why you're going to need that. You're going to need some oil to fry your fish in, salt to taste, a bay leaf. And if you don't have an actual goat pepper here, you can use the Firehouse Spice Company Ignite Goat Pepper Flakes. You're also going to need some Dunbar Global Garlic Powder. If you don't have Dunbar, I'm going to need you to get it. This entire container is only $4 and um, one as small as some of the others from some of the other imported brands can be up to $4. So you get literally four times more. One medium or large potato cut into evenly sized cubes so that they cook properly. Get about a cup of diced onions. I don't want nobody grab me or nobody come for me. I actually have half a cup of very ripe and diced tomatoes. I like the consistency of the tomatoes. I like the flavor that they give. I just like the idea of tomatoes being inside my stew. You may have a way of doing it, but of course that is absolutely up to you. What I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna turn the stove on. So we're going to make the flour in this pot. And after I'm satisfied, we're going to start with the fish in this pot, okay? Now here's the thing. When we're toasting the flour, you want to start it on low heat. I check in to make sure that it's warm. Okay, so now that the pot is starting to heat, we're going to put the flour into the pot. We are toasting the flour. We are not going to be burning the flour. Keep in mind that this is going to take a few minutes, uh, a few good minutes. So you have to be patient. You have to make sure that the stove is not up too high. You're going to see that the flour goes from being a pure white color. Now it's going to be beige and then it's going to go to mother of pearl. Our flour is getting to the right color. I want it just a little bit darker because I like my stew to be kind of dark. It's a shade of wet sand. So at this point, I'm going to turn the stove off because we don't need it to be on right now. You want to kind of turn it or move it around to release some of the steam. We're going to take about a tablespoon of butter inside the pan. 
we're going to take our potatoes and we're going to drop them into the pan. And while they're frying out, we're going to take some garlic powder and we're going to let them fry in the garlic powder and we're also going to add a pinch of salt. Okay, no more salt than that for the potatoes. The, the center of the potato is no longer opaque or dark, it's almost completely translucent. Doing this to the potatoes is going to give your pot a complexity of flavor. I like the potatoes to taste like something and then um, the fish to taste like something and the broth to taste like a mix of everything else. But that way you don't get completely bored with the flavor. This smells so good. Right now we're going to remove them from the pan. I'm putting them right back into the container that I took them out of. Next, we are going to add our onions to this exact same pot. The reason for that is we already have the butter the taste of the garlic powder so there's no need for us to change that. It's so funny because I never would have thought that being able to cook a stew fish that tastes like my mummy or my grammy on with a little bit of my flair, something that I could have done but I'm so happy that even in my adulthood I learned a few tricks and one of those tricks is being able to cut down on the amount of fat that we include in these traditional recipes. Now granted, I know you need the fat but you don't need all of the fat. Our onions are just about translucent and so here is where we're going to add our tomatoes. And again, if your mommy or grammy does not use tomatoes, and that's okay, leave me, let me do what I do when I like tomatoes. We're gonna continue to work with the tomatoes until they begin to fall apart. I also did not add any salt to this. I need us to remember that we have salt contained in some of the other elements of the stew. So there is no need for that. Put that in the same container. Ain't nobody got time to be doing no bunch of dishes. I already matter using two part. <clears throat> Let's get into frying our fish. You had that sizzle? That's what you want. Now what we're doing is we're frying this just enough to sear it, we're not frying it to cook it completely. I'm going to start removing the pieces. Monkey foot. I season this good. I season this fish good good. This is what our fish pieces look like. Now, you're going to take the pan and you're gonna put it to the side because you need to reserve some of this oil. I move the next pot. We now have the pot with the toasted flour and I'm gonna set this little pot here to boil, all right? Cause we know you can't have stew fish without some grits, right? So I'm gonna let this boil just a little bit. I have about two cups of water in here and I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup of grits and that's gonna be enough for two people because I'm giving people the option of either grits or Johnny cake but this is the fish broth the homemade fish broth like I told you we're going to add this to the pot and I have the stove turned off you're gonna see why a lot of us are afraid of the steam from the hot flour coming up into our faces especially when we add the broth this takes some of that anxiousness out of the entire process so I'm gonna take it and I'm going to stir just like this and what's going to happen is because the flour is still hot you're going to see that it's going to still thicken so you want to add it slowly To salt my grits that's it you know more salt going in there I meant salt the water and now I'm gonna add the grits and you want the grits to come to a rolling boil you're going to see that it's going to start to pop we're going to reduce the heat when we see that it starts to pop and in this part here you can see the bubbling you hear that all of the steam at the top has disappeared. We're going to turn this heat all the way down. And our stew is coming to a rolling boil right now. 
This is all the butter that I'm going to add right into the Carefully pot. Carefully add the onions and the tomatoes that we cooked earlier to this pot, all right? Please don't just take things and drop it into the pot because you're gonna cause yourself some unnecessary stress. Using this method gives you so many different flavors. You have the flavors from the fish broth and then you have the flavors from the potatoes which are cooking down and we're going to add the fish in just a little bit. I'm going to taste this right now though to see if I need to add any more thyme and you can add your um, partially dried thyme at this point. I added some already and I'm also going to throw the bay leaf in here as well because we need bay leaf. Bay leaves make everything better. If you want a really spicy pot, put as much of this as you want into the pot. I'm just going to lightly sprinkle it because if you know about goat pepper, you know just a little bit goes a very long way. And now that we have the bay leaf and the thyme in here, we're going to put our fish carefully into the pot. I'm actually going to turn off my grit spot because this should be just about done. I see enough thyme in this. I want to add some more thyme. And I see enough. Not that it ain't enough, you know. I see enough. I need to see those green specks inside here. Take that, drop that in here, example. <sighs> I could cook, you know. For our stew fish, we have our grits here. I'm also gonna take out the Johnny cake. I got the recipe for the Johnny cake from Makara Fowler. She has a website, it's called Hello Cupcake Shop. Two peas and an E because she fancy. She's also sweet mouth. So her recipe for Johnny cake is perfection. I'm gonna plate this. Food cooked, food done, it's time to eat. Thank you so much for joining me for another recipe here on Bodine Pot. It's been my pleasure walking you step by step through the process of making this brunch food. I have one question though. Are you team grits or team Johnny cake? That is the cause for discussion. Some people are 50-50. Personally, I'm team grits, especially if it's in the morning, and team Johnny cake if I want something different. And if I feel a little froggy, I'll balance half and half. The kitchen ain't smoky, it don't smell like burnt flour, everything tastes good, and let me tell you something. If you followed along this recipe and you found it to be helpful, drop something in the comments, tag me on Instagram. I'm at Bodine Victoria across all social media platforms. I would love for you to let me see what you do with your pot. Thank you so much for being in my kitchen with me, and don't forget, don't let any and everybody dig up in your pot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.